All right, guys, we're starting off the stream about two minutes before 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's hopefully be a decent stream tonight, as you may notice the thumbnail. Hopefully the alerts get fired off. Let's take a look at them, make sure the alerts are showing up. Okay, that looks good there. Let's take a look how it looks on the thumbnail. I always take a look at this before I do my videos. Good. Came out good. Hopefully you guys will come into the stream tonight. We have a uh, little bit of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff going on. Um, one thing you may notice <coughs> as soon as everybody starts coming into the stream, uh, my room is barren. <laughs> the studio is completely empty. As I mentioned before, that shelf over there, which would be over, whoop, hold on, you can see it, wait, focus. There we go, wait, put the focus, come on camera, there we go. The wall over here is gone. All the stuff off of it is gone. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm getting ready for my move in a few short weeks. Um, that's going to be the next order of business. I'll fix my camera here, kind of get it where I want it to be. Apologies ahead of time. That's why we do this a couple minutes before 9 o'clock. And uh, yeah, everything's going to be moved out to the new studio. I'm sort of still jockeying with the layout of how I want stuff to show up for it. I'm not quite there yet as far as the placement of everything. My desk is still here. We haven't moved all the real furniture out yet. Uh, we're taking a lot of hand breakables out at the moment, so that's the plan right now. If you're asking me, Rook, what is the drink for tonight? We're doing some old school A&W root beer. Not feeling too great right now. A little under the weather. So we'll see. Hopefully this will settle my stomach down. So we'll see how it goes from there. So a lot to talk about on the stream tonight. I want to thank everybody who comes into the stream at 9 p.m. Uh, we have a little bit of latency happening here. And it usually happens. So, hey, Jackie, thanks for coming into the stream tonight. A little bit of latency happening. It usually happens at the beginning of a stream. It's very, very known. Um, I'm hoping when we get to the new place, the uh, latency and the internet will be a little bit better. I'm hoping that is the plan. Uh, we have about the same speed that we increased the speed here to, um, and, and hopefully it will be much faster and have better consistency than we had in the past. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons why I wasn't doing a lot of streaming before, is the internet was not very, very good. So let's talk about, of course, we're at the nine o'clock hour. Again, the drink of choice. We're doing some A&W root beer tonight, Jackie. Drink to you. Um, a lot to talk about, so let's get into it right now. Those coming to the stream late, you can check out the beginning portion on the video on demand. So as you guys may or may not know, if this is your first time watching a stream, uh, I just celebrated my fourth year anniversary on YouTube. Um, that was on July 4th of this year. I was holding a big uh, giveaway contest, and it's still going on until the end of this Saturday. Well, I'm going to be doing the drawing on Sunday. I'm going to record it, but very similar to what you're seeing here. I'll be pulling names out of a hat, old school. We're, going to, we're not doing it through a website. We're not doing it where you have to enter a website to get entries in a giveaway. You just simply entered into the giveaway. So what was the giveaway all about? Well, normally for the last few years of the channel, I did stuff with another uh, comic store called Tate's Comics in Lauderhill. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pair with them this year. So everything came from me. All the items in this giveaway were coming from me. So it was sponsored by Rook Geek Goodness. And normally I would go with Tate's and they would sponsor certain items and I would put stuff in myself. So we're doing it different this year. Uh, we kind of did a little bit like we did last year, but this was more thematic. And what I mean by that is that there's three boxes. Uh, basically you would enter this giveaway and it's open to the continental US. Uh, you don't have to pay anything to do it. All you have to be is a US citizen to get involved in this giveaway. Jackie, uh, can you hear me in the stream all right? Just let me know, please. Again, I can never hear my voice, so I'm assuming it sounds okay. I'm looking at my mic's level here. It looks like it's all right. So just let me know in the stream, please, if there's any issues or not. So the idea was under each, there was three boxes, an A, B, and C. So under each box, there's an item. So if you wanted something underneath the anime box, in the comment section, you would just list the letter A to be involved in that particular giveaway. Thanks, Jackie. If you want to be involved in the B giveaway, it is, if I have to get right here, Something revolving around comics. So that's B. If you want to be involved in the C giveaway, in the comments, just write the letter C, which is gaming. So A is for anime, B is for comics, C is for gaming. So if you want to be involved in this giveaway, just put that into the, into the comment section of that particular video. I did post it in the stream. Um, I put it in the description box. I will post it right here as well. That is the link 
to the fourth year anniversary giveaway. So if you want to be involved in that giveaway, please head over to that particular video. Uh, you don't even really have to watch, just get to the end port part of it, or even go into comment section and say what you're interested in. The more people involved, the better. I want more people to be involved in these giveaways because it's very, very cool stuff. And I'm hoping people would like this stuff. Uh, that's my goal. I, I did something a little different than I did last year. There was stuff under boxes like last year, but this time it was thematic as opposed to just saying, do you want A, B, or C? So if you wanted something for anime, you'd want that one. If you wanted comics, you'd pick that one. If you want gaming, you would want the third box. So let's talk about, let me take this off my notes here. I wrote some notes to myself. Hopefully we'll get some more people into the stream tonight. It'd be very, very cool. Uh, last time we had, I think, 10 people at one time in the stream. So it was really, really good stream last week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a stream next week because I'm going to be in a position of moving. So I don't know if there's going to be a video or not or not that particular week. There probably won't be. It might be, not be for a week or two. And then the first video that I'll be debuting would be at the new studio. And it's going to be a statue review. It's probably going to be the John Stewart statue review followed by a studio tour. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do. Or maybe do the studio tour first and then do the John uh, Stewart statue. I haven't decided which order I would do it. I would think I would rather do the studio tour first than the John Stewart statue second. Now, I did pick up some stuff on not really a toy hunt because I wasn't really specifically searching for these items. So I was looking around and me and my girl wanted to change up we have a very very large entertainment center in our living room and we call it our castle entertainment center because they have two long pillars on the side that look like uh, like a like a castle's uh, battlement if you ever seen a castle's tower wall it sort of looks like that we have two big these two long structures on the sides of it and we call it our castle that's the nickname we have for it but there's a top bridge that goes between both of the towers and underneath it is where the tv would stand but this long long bridge it's about maybe three, it's about four feet long. And uh, for about a year, we had different transformers and we had about, uh, we had like one 10 inch pop on it. So what we're doing is we're changing up how we're doing this bridge. And we want to put all 10 inch pops on this bridge, all sorts of different pops from all the things we like. That's the idea. And we're going to take away the transformers. We're still going to put it on the entertainment center, just in different parts of it. So we're completely rearranging how things are looking now when we get to the new place. And, and, that, and that's the idea. We're kind of switching it up a little bit just to do something different. So we went out to GameStop. Of course, I can't shoot any video there. It's already hard enough with COVID to try to shoot any video, let alone video where GameStop is restricting people to only five people in a store at a time. You have to usually wait until people come back and forth. That would be very difficult. Even if I wanted to shoot video, I couldn't. So we picked up some 10 inch pops. So I'm gonna show what we picked up to you now. That's the idea here. So first things first, uh, we picked up this bad boy here. We picked up the 10 inch Pusheen. This one we got at Target, uh, uh, rather, kind of misspoke. We went to Target first and got this Pusheen. This is the 10 inch Pusheen eating a piece of, holding a piece of pizza and a winky eye. I might review this. I have not yet decided if I'm going to do a review on this guy yet. I have a lot of stuff in the pipe to do reviews for. Um, I just haven't got around to do anything for, for this or if you guys would even want a 10-inch review for the Pusheen. Um, I do like, we have all the smaller Pusheens with the exception of, I think, two of them. But uh, it's very, very cool. That's we have Pusheen with the heart, which is a small one. There's the same packaging of, the, of this Pusheen here, which is the... I uh, went eating pizza, which is a smaller scale pushing, and those pushing with a heart. They just blew this one up and made it a 10 inch. So that was the idea for this one here. So we wanted uh, the pushing because it, it's a kind of a gag me and my girl have uh, that we saw pushing. I think it was a hot topic. We picked a couple things up and it was very, very cute. And that's why she has all the pushings except I think these two. I think specifically it's these two are the ones that she do not she does not have. So that's one of the 10 inch pops we picked up. The other one was this one here, which was at GameStop, and that was the Coca-Cola Bear 10-inch scale. This is a Funko st uh, Store exclusive, limited item, but GameStop was selling this item. Um, the box is much smaller than that Pusheen box you just saw a second ago, Coca-Cola Bear. And why, one of the reasons why we picked this up, there's kind of a story, and I'll, I'll get to the story in a second. But this is, looks just like the normal Pusheen, uh, excuse me, the normal Coca-Cola Bear just scaled up bigger. Of course, it is not flocked. They have a flocked version, which I believe was a Funko Store exclusive as well. I could be wrong on that, but it is saying here Funko Store Limited Edition right there. So the reason why we picked up the Coca-Cola Bear 
is we went to, at Orlando, we went to uh, Universal Studios uh, the end of last year. They have a massive Coca-Cola store. And what was cool about the Coca-Cola store is they had everything there. And one of the things we were hunting for was the Coca-Cola bear. Because at that time, it was very hard to try to track down the Coca-Cola bear. And it was, they had tons of that Coca-Cola bear throughout the entire store. But it was a very, very cool experience. It's one of the reasons why she wanted that big one. And one of the reasons why I want to put it on that bridge. Because we want to put a lot of 10-inch pops on there. Excuse me. I know that we have, I think we have about, with these two here, I believe we have six or seven of the Coca-Cola bear, 10-inch uh, pops. Apologies, I just had a light go out on me. Uh, but, that, that being said, we want to put, like I said, all 10-inch pops across. I think it looks better this way with the light out. It looks uh, not as bright, so I think it's even better. It died out on me. Um, we want to put as much 10 inches as we can across that bridge. I think we can get about seven to eight of them. And I think we have enough right now. Um, if you're going to ask me, am I going to get the 18 inch Batman? I have decided probably not to. I don't think it will work. Um, cause they do have, if you don't know, they have a much bigger scale than that 10 inch one that you see here. Cause this is a 10 inch pop right here. They make a bigger one of the, of not this character, but they make a few, a handful of, of 18 inch pops. Uh, one is Batman, and I think the other one is going to be Pikachu, if I remember correctly. Those are going to be 18 inch pops. Uh, I was looking at the 18 inch one, but it's very, very, very large. Usually sells for about $100. I looked at it, and I was like, eh. Again, I, I, I've said this many, many times before. Hey, Hydrocritical, thanks for coming into the stream tonight, my friend. Drink, we're doing some A&W root beer tonight. A little old school. And we decided not to go with the 18-inch ones, mainly because A, they're $100, and B, the only one that so far was available currently that I've seen was the Batman one. I think they have one or two other ones. I know uh, Pikachu will have an 18-inch one as well. But I was like... I, I, it's sort of a running gag with me where I have a lot of Batman pops and when I get to the new studio, the main shot that you will see is a row of Batman pops. If I can get it into the shot, if I can get it in the frame the way I want it to be, the main, the main piece you'll see will be my, my kind of my collection of Batman Funkos. Again, I, I, I said this before as a running joke, I'm not trying to go out trying to collect Batman Funko pops. It's something that I sort of stumble into. It's not a inherent thing where I'm trying to go out specifically to get Batman pops. I just usually say, oh, this one looks good, or that one looks cool, or this is a very cool variant. And I'll usually pick it up mainly on toy hunts, getting out of subscription boxes. Something along those lines is how I usually would find those Batman pops. And I have a good chunk of them in my collection. Dragon Ball PFP. Okay, you mean the shirt here? What PFP are you talking about, uh, Hydrocritical? Not sure you're talking about there. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> so I got a little sidetracked there. Um, one other item that I did pick up at GameStop also was this one. And I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, statue reviews going forward. Oh, Jackie is this one right here. The Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Game-Verse uh, Spider-Man statue. This is a PV, PVC statue, Diamond Select, because if you know it's Diamond Select, if you see the gallery uh, placeholder right there, that logo, you know it's a Diamond Select statue or Diamond Select product. Um, it's a very cool looking statue. This will probably be reviewed, but he's very, very cool looking. This is a GameStop exclusive. Uh, he is sitting on a top, if you can see that, there's a flap right there. He is sitting, I'll turn it to the back so you can see it, on top of the Daily Bugle, like a taxi cab, shooting a web line out. Uh, I'm not the biggest Spider-Man fan. There's a few pieces of Spider-Man I do like, and this piece, me and my girl saw, and we really, really liked it. This will probably be in a new curio cabinet we're going to be picking up uh, the third week of August. A lot of the big uh, sideshow statues will be going in there. I'll probably be doing a review of all, when I have all my statues reviewed, of the cabinet itself and what they look like. So that's gonna be happening somewhere down the road. So this is a very, very cool statue. If you look at the price point, very cheap, $50 US. It's not an expensive statue. Very cost efficient statue here. He is made of plastic. He is a, what they call a PVC statue. If you drop this, it probably would not break as opposed to a poor, a poor, resin, a poor resin statue, like a sideshow statue would snap. 
this sort of statue is very, very durable. And it takes up a very, I mean, compared to a sideshow statue, as far as height goes, it's a very, very small statue form factor wise. I use that word a lot when I talk about statues because you don't have a whole lot of real estate being taken up by the statue, especially the height, not very tall. And the price point is very, very affordable at $50. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. Now, one thing about this stream tonight, guys, to let you guys perfectly honest, be perfectly honest with you, might get a little salty. It might get a little bit loud. The language might get a little heated, only because of some of the situations that has happened with Funko in the last week or so. Um, I cannot tell you what your mileage might have been with Funko during SDCC 2020 uh, exclusives, but I can tell you what happened to me. And I'll give you my perspective. Hopefully I can hear from what you guys did in your, uh, when you went out hopefully looking for any of these exclusives, because your mileage would definitely vary when it came to these products. So definitely, let's take a look at what's going on. Um, let me switch over to this screen real quick here. Hold on. There we go. And of course, we're talking about these guys right here. Let me just make the screen a little bit bigger. So you can see, we're talking about these guys right here, the SDC 2020 shared exclusives. Now, these were available, I think, Thursday of last week, if I remember correctly. And the, the big caveat here was they were doing a lot of the stuff through the Funko store for a lot of the products. If you look at the products on the right side over here, especially, uh, I, I think it was every single product you could have gotten through the Funko store. I believe it was all of them. These were the sh what they called the shared exclusive. So all the items dropped at the Funko store at a given time. And I didn't know, I really wasn't too on board with all the products here. If you look at the list of products, I said this before on prior streams, it's a lot less product than we saw compared to what we had for prior years, mainly because of COVID and mainly because Funko cut back a lot of their licenses. That's because they just cut back. And I can understand that. But if you look at the sheer number of volume of, of products for 2020 compared to 2019 or 2018, this was about, I want to say, maybe a third of what normally would be released from a convention exclusives. So that was the, <coughs> excuse me, the list of the items that came out. So let me just kill this real quick here. And the only thing I was looking for, let me just bring it back real quick, was I was looking for one item, and that was the Nightcrawler over here. That's the only thing I wanted. That's the only thing I was really hoping to get my hands on. Um, but let me get over here, and I want it right here. And I want to bring it right here. The reason I bring you to this page right here is mainly because when I got into the Funko store, I got in there about an hour after everything dropped. And I, as I said, I was, I was on the fence of whether or not I wanted to pick stuff up. I wasn't sure. I was going back and forth. Do I go? Do I not go? I'm like, you know what? Let me go to the Funko store, grab my wallet real quick. And I wanted to get that Nightcrawler. That's all I wanted. It's the only item I wanted on the entire list of the San Diego Comic-Con 2020 releases. Nothing else really made me go, I gotta get that item. That's the only thing that's important to me. I just like the pose he was in. I'm not the biggest fan of Nightcrawler, but I like the pose he was in. I like the action pose. I like the, the Banff cloud behind him as he's jumping out. I thought it looked really cool. Very dynamic pose. Something you definitely want to keep, <coughs> excuse me, unboxed, but I had a lot of issues. And here's the problems I ran into. And I think a lot of people that either Let's see here. I only saw the Super Tales, the Super Silver 2 pack at GameStop from SCC. The only one I saw Hydro Critical was the thing. I saw the zombie thing when I picked up that Spider-Man and those two 10-inch pops, the, the uh, Coca-Cola Bear. They had one zombie uh, thing, but I didn't care. I didn't want it. But I could have picked up. If I, if, I, if I really wanted I could have bought it. But that being said, so... As I said, I got, into the, the, I got into the store a little late. I picked up my wallet. I said, let me just pick up the Nightcrawler the hell with it. And the reason why I said, let me go and do it, is because those items had the San Diego Comic-Con sticker on it. Like if you would have gone to Comic-Con, SDCCC, if you would have gone there, you would have gotten the pop with the SDCC sticker on it, as opposed to the uh, shared exclusive sticker. I said, that might be a reason why to pick this up. That was my original idea. I said, let me go ahead and pick it up. So I went into the stream, I went into the store, or the, the Funko store, an hour after everything dropped. The item, I picked it up, saw it, available still, put it in my cart. 
Went to, to the page, picked the page up. It said it was an error on the page. I said, you got to be kidding me. I refreshed the page. It loses whatever you picked, brings you back to the main site. You have to click the item you want again. <coughs> it goes back into your shopping cart. The shopping cart crashed a second time on me. Because it, it, it asks you, if, are you a robot? You say, you put the code in and you hit the box. It crashed again. Refresh the page a third time, put it back in my cart a third time. So I've, during this whole time, I've been fighting for about three to five minutes back and forth between the item being in my cart, losing the page, crashing. Just the page is getting bombarded by traffic. I think the third or fourth time it finally stuck. And that's when you get into the queue, the all famous queue now of you're in queue. Don't refresh your page. You'll see lines that are going on the screen. Um, very typical uh, wait queue they had for Funko. Now that wait queue, if you're not aware, is a newer enhancement that the Funko store has put in place. Years ago, that never existed. It was even worse then than it was now. Absolutely horrible what happened there because I'm sitting literally online with the item in my cart for literally 30 minutes. I'm sitting 30 minutes in line in a virtual queue to get the item. So imagine this, if you will. If you grab something off your shelf or off a shelf to buy something and you have it in your cart to purchase the item and you go up to the checkout, but the checkout is 50 people deep, but the item's in your cart, yet the item then, the screen refreshes before you get to the front of the line and now your item disappears. It's very, very bad. and very It's a very, very bad business methodology they're doing right now. It's a bad business uh, structure they have in place for their online ordering because it's, it's still broken. It still doesn't work right. You have a high demand item with low quantity and your website still cannot handle the demand for these products. There's definitely problems here as you can see on the page right now that it's been sitting on this whole time. From Funko tweet, this is from Twitter, and it says, we apologize, we all know FTC lines are notoriously frustrating. This is not the experience we wanted our fans to have today. Our items sold out in the virtual con shop is now closed. Thank you. Error mode engaged, we'll get the issue fixed as soon as possible. Please do not refresh or leave your page or you'll lose your spot. It didn't really matter, I didn't get the item I wanted. Some people had the same problem. A lot of people got in the line earlier than I did, <coughs> and they were able to get the items they were looking for. I don't know what your guys' experience was, but for me, it was horrible. This has happened time and time again. Um, I want to read a message out from, um, I can't find the Twitter response for it, but I can tell you that the, let me get to it real quick here. Brian Mariotti, uh, the, C, uh, the C, uh, CCO of, uh, Chief CEO of Funko, did tweet similar message to this to say that, Indeed, there are problems. This is not the experience he wanted. Um, you, you're a, a, you know, I would say a multi, at least a multi-million dollar company. I don't know if it's a billion dollar company, but they still can't get their act straight. Um, it was a complete and utter dumpster fire. I use that on the thumbnail. It was a complete and utter dumpster fire, which has happened here. You're, again, you have a high demand set of collectibles. You still, to this day, cannot handle the amount of load on your system. Because a lot of people, what they're doing is they're ordering multiple items and they're flipping them. Now, I decided to go out uh, the following day to see if I can get my hands on a Nightcrawler. I said, screw it, let me go to the Hot Topic. Um, I checked uh, near 5 o'clock because I was working that day. And all the places were sold out. Two of the Hot Topics I checked were sold out. Uh, one of the stores I checked didn't get product in. They got a piece of their order. Uh, two of them. I called a third one. They had a power failure in half the mall and they decided to hold the items the next following day. So I went there first thing as I possibly could. They opened at noon. I got there at 1130. The line was already 25 people deep. And when I went to get it, I was about the third person in, uh, away from the line and they sold out. So again, it got cut out from underneath me. This is not the first time this has happened. It will not be the last time this has happened. Luckily, they're limiting it to two items per person. I was told by the store owner they received 18 items of each item. So the Goku, the, the Super Saiyan Goku, they had 18 items. The, um, let me go back over here. One was the, the uh, My Hero Academia, this guy here was 18 items, which I think everyone was looking for this one. I don't know what the big deal with this guy here is, but uh, 
everybody was looking for that guy. And of course, the 18 Nightcrawlers. Uh, it was really, really bad what happened. It was unfortunate, an occurrence that, that did occur. And it still, to me, doesn't work. They still, Funko still needs to fix their problem. It's still an issue to this day. Their Funko store, when a hot item hits or hot items hit, especially for a Comic-Con, they can't handle the load. Now, one thing that I don't know if anyone who's talked about Sino releases, because uh, I don't follow a lot of YouTubers when it comes to the SCC stuff. <coughs> I follow a few of them here and there. But like they did last year, they did their Funko Fan Festival. They did one. I, I did a review about it. It was the, the Tiki. Uh, the year before that was the uh, high school lockers. You would get three pops. It normally cost $50, and there would be a random assortment of pops. You would have Freddy Funkos made up as different characters or special exclusive pops that are a part of that line of items. This year, they didn't do it, as far as I know. Um, maybe it did appear, but I was not weary of it. I checked a lot of the, the, the high, uh, high traffic sites on, on Facebook and on Twitter. No one mentioned anything about that fan festival stuff. So I'm assuming this year it didn't happen, which is unfortunate because it's very, very cool. It usually happens at the end of San Diego Comic-Con where there will be special invitations that will be given out. And it'd be, I think it's invitation only or press. And they would go to these events and you would get those tikis. I think it costs 100 and I think it was like 150 bucks to go to this event, but you're guaranteed one of those. They did it like Tiki for last year. The year before that was the locker, the, the high school locker. And the year before that was a different thematic item. And it was all random stuff inside those items. They were branded with the St. Louis Comic Con sticker, but then you can order a portion of these as, the, as, the, uh, as another set of them because they would have the St. Louis sticker as well through the Funko store. That was the idea. I was going to say the shared exclusive, but it's not. It all depends what the items were. So that's what they were doing. This year, as far as because of COVID, I don't believe they did it. I don't think they did that sort of thing this year, which is unfortunate because it was a very, very cool experience. Now, let me know in the stream, guys. Um, did you have similar experiences when you ordered? The, if you guys try to order at the Funko store, did you have similar experience that what I had? because it was absolutely horrible. I hated what happened. It was unfortunate, it was not good. They still, to this day, even from that tweet you saw, still can say, honestly, there's a problem and it's still not working right. A lot of people go in there mainly to flip. A lot of the flippers are in there trying to buy, the, you know, luckily Funko puts a limitation um, on items. There are bots in there and things like that that they'll have bots in place, they'll try to buy these things and immediately will flip them on eBay. That Nightcrawler, for example, was normally you buy it for 15 bucks. I've been seeing it anywhere from 35 to 40, which to me is double the price, which really isn't too bad. Uh, the Powerpuff Girls, when they first appeared at Hot Topic, um, those three particular ones, two of them I got for 30 a piece. One of them, I think I had to spend 50 to get that one. And that was first to market. Those are out. There's a way out now. Oh, you wanted to get the Iron Baba was in the store, so you had to order it online. Yeah, again, Jackie, they had lots of problems with it. They still have not yet ironed out these issues. And to me, that's a big problem. And they still need to work out their issues. Uh, why this far, <clears throat> with the amount of demand for these products, they can't work this out, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me when you have an item, <coughs> excuse me, that's in this far demand that you can't nail down your website. It doesn't make sense. You, yes, they're high demand items, but they need to really nail down how this process works. It's still broken. It still does not work. So it is still an issue, um, but yeah, it's not very, very good. Now, as far as content coming this week, this is probably the only video going up this week, this stream. And again, next week, probably no videos because, well, one of the videos, I stand corrected because I'm going to do the winner of the giveaway. I'm going to be pulling names out of a hat, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, of this stream. It sounds like Funko doesn't care anymore. Um, I don't think they don't care anymore, Jackie. I just don't think they want to fix their online experience. Uh, they say there's a problem. They say there's issues, but they still don't fix the underlying cause of the problems. So yeah, so Sunday will be, the last video for probably about two weeks, at least two weeks, possibly three weeks going into August. So just so you'll know that now. Um, yeah, so it's probably going to be, as I mentioned, the winners we pulled this Sunday, bearing how I feel, because I am feeling a little under the weather, <coughs> just a cough. 
hoping nothing worse, a little sniffles, and uh, I'll be pulling the winners for those giveaways. If you guys do want to enter it, again, I'll put the link here for you, right there. If you head to that video, if you, if you head over to that link there, that's to the fourth year anniversary giveaway. If you want to watch it, put in what you want, uh, A, B, or C. <coughs> A is for anime, B is for comics, C is for gaming. I'll be pulling the winners that Sunday, and I'll be putting the video up. That'll be the last video for about, I'm thinking, at least two, possibly three weeks to get the new studio in place, completely redesigned, much bigger than this small little room, and it's going to be very, very good. I'll be shooting it back on my camera again, not using my computer. I'll be still streaming like this um, when I do streams, but those will probably be very, a little bit more random. But I'll be shooting normal content again, which is what I want to be really doing. Uh, because doing with my studio behind me, as you see, and my workstation, it's very, very difficult to shoot content. But that's about it, guys. Um, I want to thank everybody who came into the stream tonight. Um, again, we start at 9 o'clock, normally in Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of stuff happening with the Funko store. Definite problems. Um, it was a dumpster fire. I thought I'd be more salty than I was, but I tried to keep it kind of calm. Um, but yeah, so a lot of stuff happened with Funko Store. Not great. Uh, the experience is very, very bad. They still have issues. They still can't iron out their problems. But that's it, guys. 9.30. I want to thank everybody who came into the stream tonight. You can watch this entire process on the video on demand. Probably when it goes up tomorrow because normally uh, YouTube is notoriously known to put out content very, very late. Thanks, Jackie. So we'll be taking you off, guys, in 3, 2, 1. Take care and see you next video. Bye-bye.